mic check, 212, bitch. What's up, guys? This is DDP back with another edition of Feeling Dangerous. Now, I might be rolling a little bit slower today in terms of getting the content out, but that's because I am somewhat reformatting the Feeling Dangerous podcast here, and it's going to have some initial bumps and whatnot as we get into the flow of it. But... First and foremost today, I want to kick things off with a little bit of Dallas Cowboys talk. Yes, that is a little bit more of a rarity these days on the channel, but don't worry, Mavericks fans, I am coming around to that content you want because I got a lot to say about the latest potential setback with KP and, uh, hey, post-game show the other night against the Kings. But first and foremost, we got to take a look at something which might be probably one of, it's it's ongoing but it's one of the biggest snubs of the Pro Football Hall of Fame that we've had in some time here. Drew Pearson in the Centennial class was denied. Now, this is a bigger class than usual. Instead of the usual 10 or 11 guys, we're talking like 20 guys that are getting in. And the idea was that this would break up the log jam, the monotony of drawing this out. Because, hey, we know that in the 70s, you had the Cowboys and you had the Steelers that were the two great teams that sent tons of Hall of Famers in. So rather than just having all these guys all in one class, they've tried to break them up and take them out piece by piece by piece. But there's a stunning omission in how they've handled this, and that is one Drew Pearson, the original number 88 and the single biggest name to have ever appeared on the Dallas Prospect YouTube channel. Yes, we were able to, two seasons ago, have a brief sit-down with Drew Pearson at a Cowboys Experience event. That was a lot of fun. Got to talk a little bit of previewing the Cowboys-Lions game with him the day before the game back then. Uh, yeah, this is this is a mind-boggling omission on the Pro Football Hall of Fame's part because Drew Pearson is the only, I repeat, the only NFL Hall of Famer all-decade team man, all-decade team player to not be in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. You heard that right. All-70s team, he's not there. Literally, every player at every position for that te- for that decade is there. Your safeties, your corners, your running backs, your kickers, your punt returners, they're all there. Drew Pearson is not. All the guys from the 70s, minus Drew Pearson, there. All the guys from the 80s, there. 90s, there. What are we doing? What are we doing? We got in Jimmy Johnson, and that was a great emotional moment. You saw Jimmy Johnson getting choked up at halftime when it was announced to him. You saw his former quarterback, Troy Aikman, who was uh, broadcasting that game. They cut back to Troy, and you saw Troy's reaction to finding out Jimmy got it, and you saw the tears in his eyes. That is a great moment. You had Cliff Harris, a great Cowboys safety from the 70s, get in. And so while the Cowboys got representation in this class, the denial here of Drew Pearson, the the recipient of the official first Hail Mary in NFL history is insane. In case you don't remember... It wasn't like it was called the Hail Mary. It was what Staubach referred to the pass as after the game when he had to throw just a desperation deep ball. You had Drew Pearson haul it in, take it in for the deciding score. And yeah, Roger Staubach after the game just said, you know, I said a quick prayer and threw up a Hail Mary. Boom. There you go. And if you look at these stats, I understand that, you know, there were there was just frustration for Terrell Owens having to wait a couple of years before he finally got in and as bad as that was for him he did eventually get in his numbers certainly warranted it but if you want to talk about for Drew Pearson who's been waiting forever it seems like and you compare that to another wide receiver from the 70s that got in uh Lynn Swan We have a real debate here because Pearson's numbers are pretty much as good or better as Lynn Swan, and yet he got snubbed. So in this case here, we want to talk about games played. Drew Pearson, 156 compared to 116. Uh, Game started, 144 compared to 96. Receptions, 489 compared to 336. That's in favor of Drew Pearson. Yards, 7,822 compared to 5,462. Then we take a look here at... 
Let's see, yards per attempt or yards per reception, 16 for Pearson, 16.3 for Swan. Not much better for Swan there. Uh, touchdowns, 48 compared to 51. Longest receiving touchdown of his career, 67 for Pearson, 68 for Swan. And yet Swan's been in for a long time. And I'm not trying to say, hey, uh, Swan doesn't deserve to be in there. No, of course he does. But you know who else does? Drew Pearson. Drew Pearson deserves to be in the NFL Hall of Fame. And the fact that it's drawn out this long is kind of a joke. Like, the whole idea of this centennial class going in was that they were going to get in a lot of these guys who were caught in this logjam, get them into the Hall of Fame where they deserve to be. I mean, if you want to go with the only... I said earlier that I think it was every player off that all-NFL team from the 70s is there. I think I think if you expanded that further, you could say maybe the punt like Ray Guy is in the NFL Hall of Fame. Like a punter is in before Drew Pearson. But if you want to look at it this way, you could say, I think from that 70s team, you got like a kick returner and a kicker are the only ones not in, other than maybe Drew Pearson. Like it's that mind-boggling that he has been left out all these years because there are guys in the Hall of Fame at his position who have done that. Now, you could say, well, hey, Swan was on the Steelers, and the Steelers were, like, the, you know, original dynasty, basically. But, okay, the Cowboys, the whole America's Team moniker started in the 70s, so it's not like the Cowboys were a bunch of bums. No, they were the second-best team, multiple championships. He's a multiple-time champion. Like, what, what, what else are you looking for? As far as the big plays and the big moments, you had that with Drew Pearson. So this is a this is a crying shame. There's not really any excuse for not having Drew Pearson in the NFL Hall of Fame, but you know what? That's how the politics of it all works. So hopefully, hopefully, I feel for Drew because he had this huge gathering uh when the official announcements were coming down. That's where this photo here is taken from. And he had a lot of friends and family around and he was wearing, you know, the Hail Mary hat and everything and it didn't come out and it was almost painful it was almost painful to watch because you could see the emotion in his face you could see how upset and dejected and frankly kind of confused he was about it he's 69 years old there's no reason at this point for him to not go in the only thing i can hope is that because we had to see and you could hear the emotion in his voice when he did talk about it he's upset about this he's been waiting a long long time for this and so you hope that maybe the consolation or not consolation prize, but maybe as a result of seeing this in this video uh, going around a little bit, that maybe just maybe next year they'll finally be like, yeah, we can't let that happen again. Cause it's kind of ridiculous that he's not in now that we actually look at it on paper and realize he's the only all decades player to not be in the hall of fame. And his stats are better than guys who are already in there there's no there's no excuse for this so it, it's a joke it's a joke that he's not in the fact that you can't literally say hey it's a centennial class we're already breaking the rules in terms of how many guys we're getting in let's add one more or let's add two more or whatever just get the guy in because if you cannot tell the story of the dallas cowboys as john jock taylor likes to say on espn uh you cannot tell the story of the dallas cowboys with at least including a chapter about drew pearson and the Cowboys, America's team, you can't tell the story of the NFL, period, without the Dallas Cowboys. So if this guy gets his own chapter in the story of the Cowboys, and the Cowboys are as integral to the to the entire league and sport as they are, then there's no reason he shouldn't be in the Hall of Fame, period, end of sentence.